All right. So now that you are on question 29, we are ready to use some real components. So we're going to start using a potentiometer and a resistor and a breadboard. So for this experiment, um, you will need to grab a breadboard, which looks like this, um, a resistor. I like to use a 1000 ohm resistor, which is brown, black, red, a potentiometer, um, which looks like this. Um, and I know that's a 10,000 ohm potentiometer because it says 10K at the very end of the writing right there. Uh, two jumper wires. Um, so these ones will make electrical connections. A battery pack um, that looks like this. Uh, and a multimeter, which looks like this. Okay, so um, first things first, in finding your components in our classroom, we have all of our resistors marked with a blue highlight, and each one is labeled. I chose a 1,000 ohm, so I'm going to pull out the 1,000 ohm. And when I pull it out, you'll notice that they are all red, uh, brown, black, red, which is an indicator that they're a 1,000 ohm resistor. Make sure that one that you grab is coming from the right spot and gets put back in the right spot. Um, over on this side, the orange ones are potentiometers. I want my potentiometer to be 10 times greater than my resistor for this experiment. So I'm going to use a 10,000 ohm potentiometer, um, which are right in here. Then wires are up top, uh, jumper cables, um, and breadboards to the side. Okay, so setting up for our experiment. Um, the first thing to take a look at is your breadboard. So a breadboard is just a series of electrical connections. It looks like this on the front. And then on the back side, if we disassemble it, you can see that there's all of these little connectors with metal wires. So when I plug things in, they are attached with all five of those holes um, connected to each other. So five across, five across, five across, and then the outsides go positive and negative all the way vertically. So on the front side, it looks like this, um, and it's just a series of metal connections. So anything I plug in will be connected to anything that it's touching metal-wise on the underside. The first thing that I like to do is using my battery pack here, um, you wanna make sure that your batteries are actually plugged in the right direction uh, so negative goes to the spring, and positive with a little bump goes to the other metal bump. Um, I like to go with my positive wire going into the outside positive. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get them in, so I just kind of wiggle it in there. And then my negative goes to my negative outside wire there. Um, you can actually set this up however you want to set it up, but it's nice to go outside to outside so that I can read my components across like a sentence, and it just makes it easier to track. Um, then, as I look at my circuit diagram right here, I have chosen a 1,000 ohm potentiometer, so that's a 1K, and a 10,000 ohm potentiometer, sorry, it's a 1K resistor and a 10,000 ohm potentiometer. And I can see on my circuit, I'm gonna go from the positive side to my resistor. So I'm gonna start with that. So I'm gonna take my resistor and go from the positive end. I can go into any of the holes and then go to any other line. In this case, I go to line number six, just kind of at random. So now I'm connected from positive into line six. Then my next piece is I'm gonna go from my resistor down to my potentiometer. So I need a connection across to my potentiometer. So now I'm ready to plug in my potentiometer. Uh, potentiometer looks like this, and on the underside there are three pins. These three pins um, are set up kind of like in a little triangle, but I want to put them in so that they each go in their own row. So I'm going to go on the other side over here, and just to make it easy for me to remember, I'm going to try to go into pins one, two, and three. Uh, and so I've got them in one, two, and three, and then I'm just going to kind of like wiggle it down so I don't accidentally break any of the pins, and it should fit in snugly right there. Um, so the way that a potentiometer works um, whoa, uh, is it comes in 
through one of the outside pins. So the current is gonna come in this way. Then it's gonna go along some part of this resistor right here before going out through the middle pin, which is called the wiper pin, and then continuing on with the circuit. Um, this wiper pin can move, so I could go all the way down here, and then it would come in through A, go through no resistance before going out the wiper, or I could go all the way over on this side so that it comes in through A, goes around the entire resistor, which would be 10,000 ohms of resistance, before leaving out the wiper. So I can vary from 0 to 10,000 ohms of resistance, or 0 to whatever the maximum resistance is for this potentiometer. Um, basically, this is like a dimmer switch on a light bulb where you can twist it, or a volume knob uh, on a radio where you can twist it and it adjusts the volume up or down or adjusts the brightness up or down by increasing or decreasing the resistance. Okay, so I was plugged in here like that. Um, now I need to actually make my connection. So I'm going to use a jumper cable and I'm gonna use my jumper wire from row six. I can go into any of them on the same five of row six. And then I'm gonna go into row one on the opposite side so that I now connect up into my potentiometer. Since I went in through one of the outside pins, row one, I'm gonna come out through the middle pin. The middle pin is gonna be my wiper. So I'm gonna go out of my wiper and then I'm gonna finish the circuit by taking it out to the negative side of the battery. So now I have a completed circuit. It's connected to my battery pack, which we can't see, but there it is. Um, and so I have a connected circuit that's going all the way positive to my 1000 ohm resistor, 1000 ohm resistor over to the potentiometer, which goes through the 10K potentiometer, and then out to the negative side of the battery. All right. So now I can double check and see how this is working. Um, I have my multimeter here and my multimeter is turned on. In order to turn it on, I have flipped the switch from off to on and I have it set to 20 DC volts. So it will measure up to 20 volts. My maximum for my battery would be 9 volts because there are 6 1-volt batteries in there. Um, so I'm going to start just by double-checking and seeing if I just check my battery, what value I get. So just checking on the battery, I'm going to pull the battery out, and I can touch wire to wire here um, like this. I can hold it with my fingers because it's not going to give me a shock, it's just a battery. Um, and then I'll do the same thing for the negative here. And when I do that, I get a total reading of 8.47. So my battery pack can give me 8.47 volts. It would max out at like nine. These are kind of dead batteries, but they'll work okay. So now I'm gonna plug them back in, uh, negative to negative and positive to positive so that I recreate my circuit again. I like going into the top one so that those wires stay out of the way. All right, popping this back in view. So now I can um, touch across my circuit using my two wires. I touch one here and one here on the two wire ends and I'm getting 0.82 there, which means the rest of the voltage has to be held on my potentiometer. So if I touch a piece of wire on the outside here and the outside right there, oops, can't see it, so I'll come around this way, the outside right there, I get 7.6 um, volts on my potentiometer. So now I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver and I can adjust how much voltage, so I'm using a flathead screwdriver here, I'm trying to make sure that this continues to stay touching. No. Almost. Well, it's definitely reading 7.6. All right. So now as I twist here, I can take my resistance down. And as I take my resistance down, 
on my potentiometer, my voltage also drops. So my voltage, I'm taking it down as close to zero as I can get. Um, and when I'm taking my voltage or my, my resistance down, my voltage is also going down. When I turn my voltage back up, or my resistance back up, excuse me, I'm adjusting my resistance up towards 10,000, my maximum is 7.6 there. So this is now holding 10,000 ohms of resistance, which gives me 7.6 uh, volts. This is 1,000 ohms, which is one-tenth as much, so it should give me one-tenth as much voltage because voltage is proportional to resistance in series. So let's go ahead and double check that. Does it give me a value of 0.76? It's a little bit higher, 0.82. Um, so that's within our margin of error, right? If we do some rounding, we're close-ish, especially because these components coming out of the factory are plus or minus 10%. So as long as we're within 10%, uh, it's totally viable. So that's how we're going to use our potentiometer and set up a circuit using real components. Thanks.